Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about clinical trials. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out new content, often in response to your comments or questions, so keep them coming. I also want to invite you to go to yerba.com to get your personalized yerba report. Your yerba report is created by taking all of your medical records once you either upload them to us or give us permission to access them electronically. We take all of that information, cross-reference it with the latest medical evidence, and give you a very easy to understand report free of jargon with explanations on why certain treatments might be offered to you, the pros and cons of each, and then one of my favorite features, a set of questions that you might want to put in your queue to take with you to medical appointments so that you go prepared. And also this way you know those questions are ones that doctors like to get, that doctors are accustomed to getting, that those are questions you should feel free to ask. So let's talk about clinical trials. A lot of people know about clinical trials and they think about them as experimental therapy. They think that they might be being a guinea pig. There's a whole lot of feelings people have about clinical trials. There are a couple key things to say. We know that the treatments we have now work. We know their side effects. We've ruled out many treatments that don't work because of clinical trials. So we've, we don't treat patients as guinea pigs. We treat them as participants in a study, as partners in advancing the science of breast cancer care or other cancer care or any care. There have been uh, ethical violations in the clinical trial process in the past. As a result, the safeguards, the ethical and clinical safeguards to people on clinical trials are so strict that it can take a couple years to get a, pro a trial approved and get funding for the trial. So I want to assure you that if you are going on a clinical trial from a place that's a major medical center that's been reviewed by the Human Subjects Review Board and the scientific community, that you are not being tested on something unproven. Most clinical trials use a drug that's been tested in animals, well, first cell cultures, and then in animals, and then in really healthy volunteers to find the right dose, and then in people with an illness. And by the time you're offered participation in a clinical trial, that drug has already been in use for up to a decade or maybe even longer if changes are made to the drug and how it's given. A clinical trial is a chance to get something better than the best we already have. If you go on a clinical trial, it's possible that the trial is what's called a randomized trial and that you'll be randomly assigned to usual treatment, what you would get if you didn't go on the study, versus something that may be better. There are, it's rare to see placebo-controlled trials in cancer. We generally use them when we're testing a new side effect drug. So let's say so, there are three side effect medications and we want to see, does this drug work better than placebo for helping with, let's say, nausea or sleepiness? We rarely use placebo-controlled trials. In people where we're using doing a trial to test one treatment versus another, everybody gets treatment. The other thing is if you are on a placebo trial, controlled trial, you'll be told that. And you may decide you want to go on it and you may decide you don't want to. Without going on the trial, you're going to get the standard therapy. You're going to get the best we already have. A trial gives you a chance to be on something that's often the very same treatment plus something else or taking the very best treatment, let's say it's three drugs, and substituting this drug for a new drug. So we're constantly making what we might call tweaks, so small modifications to the combinations of drugs. And again, these are often drugs that have been used for you know, 50 years, and now we're combining them in different ways. Or they've been used in lung cancer, and now we're using them in breast. Or they've been used in breast, and now we're using them in bladder, because we want to see if there's activity in other tumors. It's been a great drug. And in bladder, let's try it in breast cancer, in particular this type of breast cancer, because as you know, if you've been watching our channel, breast cancer is actually many different diseases. Doctors will sometimes make decisions that some people won't be interested in clinical trials based on how they look or their level of education. I find this heartbreaking. Everybody should have the same opportunity to participate in clinical trials. We do put extra safeguards in for people who are more vulnerable. So racial minorities 
have been abused in the past with research. So we make sure that we put in if extra safeguards without being paternalistic. It's a, it's a fine line, isn't it? We want to make sure we protect, but we don't want to protect so much you don't get the opportunity. Same with people with uh, lower uh, resources. We want to make sure that we don't coerce people because the cost of the drugs are covered that you could see how somebody would say, well, I can't get treatment unless I go on the trial. And that's a f that could be a form of coercion. So these are the things we need to be careful about. But let's say you are interested in going in on a clinical trial. Ask your doctor, your medical team, am I eligible for a trial? You may be eligible for one or two. You usually have to pick one. Your medical team will help you decide which one is going to give you the greatest benefit and what would be the standard of therapy without that trial. So you want to make sure that at least one of the groups of people in that study get the best care for you. Then you will not be put on the trial unless you give your consent. The informed consent process is quite lengthy. We have put all these safeguards in place so that you understand your participation is voluntary. You understand what will happen on the clinical trial, everything that will happen, the number of visits you'll have, how much blood draw you'll have, what's part of the study and what's part of usual care. You will be told that your care will be the same even if you say no thank you to the trial. That is, nobody will treat you differently because, oh, they didn't participate in a trial. That's unethical, and we make a promise to you that you will get the absolute best care even if you don't go on the trial. There are some nice things about being on a trial. As I mentioned, the treatments can be covered by the trial itself instead of your insurance or out of pocket. Sometimes trial staff can help with things like arranging trips to the office where you get your treatment. You get a lot of attention. You get called up between your treatment. How are you feeling? Because we have to track all of your experience while you're on the trial, regardless of whether you're on the standard arm or the investigational arm. You might be asked to fill out quality of life surveys. So you get that extra level of attention. One of the main reasons to go on a clinical trial in addition to getting something better than the best we already have is to contribute to the field. As I mentioned at the top of the video, we are where we are in cancer care because people have participated in trials. And most people who go on trials tell me it's not for me. They say it's because I wanna help my daughters, not just my biologic daughters, but my metaphorical daughters. I want things to be better for people in the future. And altruism is probably the most straightforward reason to go on a trial, I'll be honest, because if you go on a trial hoping to get the newer treatment and you don't, what's left is your altruism, your participation in the research enterprise and making things better. I've covered a lot. Uh, drop a comment or question below. We'd love to hear from you. If you went on a trial, why you decided to do that. If you didn't go on a trial, why you decided not to and any other questions that you have. Again, a reminder to go to yerba.com and get your personalized yerba report and to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.